Hello everybody. Okay, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to do a stem and leaf plot in Excel. And this is actually going to correspond to your chapter 2, chapter review problem 8A, where you're going to be asked to do a stem and leaf plot. And we're going to be looking at the data from example 6 on page 64. So I'm assuming that you've already read up and you know what a stem and leaf is. I'm going to show you how to create it. And then once we create it in Excel, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and um, cut and paste it into Word and make it all part of that. So, here we go. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make two columns. One that says stem. And we're going to make another column that says leaves. And then we're going to give ourselves a little bit of width on this column. Okay. Now we're going to come over, because we've got our data entered here, we're going to come over and we are going to highlight the data that we want to sort. And we want to sort this data from low to high. So we want to go over to data, we want to come here, so you want to go to your data tab, and then you want to come here, and notice this says sort smallest to largest, and that's what we want to do. We want to sort smallest to largest, we want to sort low to high. And notice that when we click on that, our data actually is now sorted from our lowest value of 0 to our highest value of 51. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to put in our leaves. Well, we want to actually enter our stems first, then we're going to put on our leaves. Notice that we've got two single digit values here, 0 and 3. Now, because we've got two digit data, all of our stems are going to be the values that are going to be in our ones column and I'm sorry, our leaves are going to be the value in our ones columns and our ten our stems are going to be the value in our tens columns. Because we've got single digits here, we have technically zero as a placeholder um, for the stem for our single digit data. So our first stem is going to be zero. We have some values here in our teens, like 12, 17, 18, 19. So we have a stem of 1. We've got some 20-something values here. So we're going to have a stem of 2. We've got some 30-something values right here. And we have a stem of 3. We've got some 40-something values for a stem of 4. And last but not least, we have a 50-something value. So our stems are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to enter our leaves. So now the thing that you need to remember here is that you just can't start inputting the leaves. And the reason why that is is because Anytime you go to enter a value, a numeric value in Excel, it's going to treat it as that, as a number. So, for example, if I went to go enter my leaves for my single digits here, and I went and did 0 and 3, it types in OK, it looks OK, but watch what happens when I click off that cell. I just get 3. Because Excel is just assuming that, oh, she just wants to enter uh, 3, but she just went ahead and she entered it as 0, 3 to indicate that she has no value in the tens place or for that matter any other place. She just has a single value of 3 in the ones place. Now that's probably a complicated explanation, um, but hopefully if you kind of went, remember back, go back to place values, you'll get what I'm saying. So in order to go around that, to circumvent that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an apostrophe to right here I'm using an apostrophe to tell Excel hey Excel this is a text value and that's how I want you to reckon to recognize what I'm going to input in this cell and I'm going to use that for all of my other cells so I go ahead for my stem of 0 I enter 0 I enter 3 and when you enter your leaves, you enter your leaves from lowest to highest. That's why we sorted the data. 
Now I go to my stem of one because I want to enter my team values. So I type my apostrophe again. And I have two values of 12, so I'm going to have two twos there. I have one value of 17. I have three values of 18, so I've got three eights. And I have a value of 19, so I have one nine. I come down. Now I'm at my 20-something values. So I've got three values of 21, so I type my apostrophe. I have three ones. I have one value of 22, so I'm going to have a 2 here. I have two values of 26 here, so I've got two 6s. I've got two values of 27, so I've got two 7s. I've got one value of 28 and two values of 29, so I have 28 and two 9s. Now I come down to my 3 stem, which are going... My 3 stem is going to hold the leaves for my 30-something values. So in my 30-something values, I have a 30, so I type my apostrophe, I have a 0 here. I've got two 31s, so I've got two 1s. I have 1, 2, 3, 4 values of 32, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 2s for those leaves. I've got two 33s, I've got one, two 35s, 1 36 and 238. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to slide that over some more. So some more room. And now I am at my stem that's going to hold the leaves for my 40 something value. So I have a 41, a 42, 43, 45, and 47. So I come back up here and I have a Asterisk, 41, 40, not an asterisk, an apostrophe, I'm sorry, 41, 42, 43, 45, and 47. And then I only have one value in my 50-somethings, and that's 51. So I type my apostrophe, type a 1, and there you have it. So now I have finished with my stem and leaf in my Excel program. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a copy and paste. Now notice I have my labels, my column labels here, but I want to go one above because I want to grab this column up here and you'll see why in a minute. And I highlight, I do a control V to copy, then I go to my Word document and I type problem 8. This is A. And now I'm going to do a control V to paste it. Now I'm going to kind of sort of clean this up, make it fit the little party. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight here and I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to center my stem values. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to highlight this column here. And I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to give it just a left border. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up one here, and I'm going to give that a left border as well. And you might be saying, well, why are you doing that? Well, because if you look at the example that they give you on page 65 of your textbook, you always want to do a legend that lets... Um, that indicates how if people want to put the data set back together because this is just a data set represented as a stem and leaf if people want to put it back together how putting it back together looks so what you could do here is you could say okay well if you have a stem of say um, one and we want to make sure that we are using the right font here. So actually this has this was Calibre 11. So if we use a stem of 1 and we come over here and we use a stem of a leaf of say 3 
and again we have to be careful because if you look up here do you see this is centered we need it to be left justified so we're going to bring that over there and we're going to format this to be all the same and then we're going to tell whoever is looking at our stem of leaf that this represents 13 pounds and then what we're actually going to do is we're going to go back and I always I love aerial fonts so I'm going to use an aerial and I'm going to use a 10 point font and then over here I'm going to pull this out just a little bit there and then I'm going to take the bold face off of here and there you have it. So that's how you do a stem and leaf plot in Excel and custom and paste it into Word. So I hope that this has helped uh, some of you and provided you with somewhat of a shortcut on how to do this. There's, only, there's one more little justification thing that you could do if you wanted to. And that is you can always just bring that down a little bit. There you go. So there you have it. So I will uh, talk to all of you soon. Bye-bye.